folks, Ariel over here at Finance, where today I wanted to show you how I make broth. You, if you've watched any of my other cooking videos, you know I use bone broth in all kinds of things that I make because of its wonderful flavor and its, uh, you know, awesome nutrition. So what I've got here is all of the bones and joints and skin and stuff from a turkey. Um, I have a video on how I roast turkeys. Uh, you can use, because I'm sure people ask, you can use any kind of bones that you have. Um, turkey happens to be one of my favorite flavors, but I absolutely save and use bones from chickens, um, elk, beef, even fish, or if you peel shrimp, keep the, sh the, the shrimp. Uh, Burley thinks he would like this uh, turkey bones, which he's not going to get right now. Um, keep like the shrimp shell and tail and you can even make a good um, seafood stock from that. So I'm putting everything in here and this does include you know the joints and the cartilage and all of that goodies and I already had some water in the pot there. So we are going to just turn this on and just to get everything hot you can leave it on the high heat to get it warmed up and i'm going to top this off so that the bones are as close as possible covered with water but i want a tiny bit of room on the top there so that they um it doesn't boil over i'm just gonna squash them down in here as they start to cook they'll kind of sink under the water so that's really simple this is all I do. I know some people when they're making stock like to add, you know, veggies and stuff, which you can do. I don't prefer it because if you're trying to make a bone broth, because by the time it gets done cooking, the ve veggies get really bitter. So I'd rather just have the broth and then put those things in fresh. Um, you can season it. You could certainly put herbs and stuff in with it. Again, I just like to do all of that so that I can make whatever flavor I like with whatever I'm making. So all that is in here is bones and water and the bones does include like I said the joints and the cartilage because all that's important to get the gelatin and the collagen and all those wonderful benefits for hair and skin and all that stuff. Um, and once it starts to just simmer we don't want this to be a raging boil. We just want to get a couple bubbles and, and then I'm going to turn on low. And then here's the the important part. I let mine cook for five days. I that you did not miss here that I said five days. In five or six hours, you have a good flavored broth for sure. And you could stop any time after that. And I have had people tell me that that's entirely unnecessary. You don't need to cook it that long, and so on. And and that may be true. But right now, if I pick up a turkey bone here. I cannot break this and I will show you how at the end of five days that just is going to go to mush. And in my experience um, it doesn't usually do that after three days or four days but after five days it has um, it's just leached everything entirely out of the bones and they actually just crumble. They make a paste and I'll show you what I do with that as well. Even the paste doesn't go to waste. But the only thing I do in between now and then, once this gets hot again, I'm going to turn it down, um, is check on, I'm going to keep the lid on it, um, is check on it and if I'm losing too much moisture to evaporation, I'll add a little water just to keep the bones underwater. Now you could leave this on a stovetop the whole time. In the winter, I can leave it on my wood stove, which is out of sight right there the whole time because that is hot round the clock and so that just keeps it warm and simmering. The easiest way to do this, however, is to do this exact same thing in a crock pot. The reason I don't do that here is because that would draw electricity around the clock for five days and I don't have a big enough power system to support that. That's one of the reasons I don't use a crock pot here. But any method of heating you like, but the simplest truly is to put it in a crock pot on low, cover it with water, seal the lid down, and you may have to add a little water once or twice in those next few days, but you don't have to touch it for the next five days. So that is super simple. And once this has been simmering for days, I will show you what it looks like. So this is when we've just started it. 
You can see all the bones and such there, and they're almost all under the water. A couple are sticking out, but they will start to go under there as as this um, softens up. And we've got just one or two little bubbles coming up to the top. So we are going to turn it down and just keep it on the lowest heat you can possibly keep it on. Not a boil, just enough to keep it hot. Here you can see our broth, how we're getting just bubbles on the top and we don't want it to get to a full boil so we're going to turn it down and we're going to keep it heating just about like that with the occasional bubble coming up and steam coming off but not hotter. Don't want to boil. Like I said, in a crock pot, the low setting is usually just about perfect. So, five days later, you can see how this has just been simmering on here. There's just a few little bubbles coming up, not at a full boil. There's actually a little caster for my wood stove under here, because if I put the whole pot right on the stove, I will get more of a rolling boil. But we're going to take this off. And here we go. So, I have not done anything with this for the past five days other than usually like the first day a little bit of the water will evaporate down enough that I add some more. Um, but after that you get kind of enough of the solids cooking out that it will just kind of seal itself off and you don't tend to lose a whole lot from evaporation after that. So I like to strain this out use this bowl um, and I just use my little strainer here usually to just start scooping because all the all the big bone um, you know chunks are still in here. Burley's coming over to have a look because this smells good. So yeah, don't burn yourself. Anyway, I just use that to scoop out the biggest chunks first. And let me show you what happens after these have been simmering for that many days. And this is why I do this for five days, not just five hours. And again, you certainly don't have to have a wood stove or keep it on a stove burner. The easiest way to do this if you're in a house with plenty of electricity is to just um, put them in a crock pot on low and close the lid, come back five days later really really simple. I have a lot of friends now who do this as well. So I'm getting just getting all the, the biggest chunks out of the bottom here and even already I can feel how some of these bones are kind of crumbling apart. Fairly is getting very attentive. You're probably aware of this but it's not recommended to feed cooked poultry bones to dogs because they get very um, sharp and prone to splintering, which can be a very bad thing. Uh, raw poultry bones, of course, if you raw feed your dog like Burley is, they, um, they're much more rubbery and they can be crunched up and digested. He does eat those all the time. And he's actually going to eat these too because while well, most of his diet is raw, he loves this bone mush that we are just about to create here. So you don't have to get every little crumb out of the bottom. That's most of the chunks kind of filtered out. And again, in here we had not just the bones, but the cartilage, the you know, any joint tissue that's possible, all of that stuff. So here's what the bones look like. They're a little steamy hot, and I usually get a little more liquid that kind of drains out off of them as I scoop them out there. Just pour that back in. So we're going to let those cool off for a second. And I actually want to make some soup for my lunch. I usually end up making something with the broth right when it's done. So I'm going to just filter again this, um, you know, through my little strainer there. Um, just to catch any more little chunks and bone bits and such. I'm just going to put some straight into this pot and make some soup for my meal. And then the rest are going to keep for later. And none of these chunks would hurt you at this point. You could even eat the, the bones because they're definitely mushy enough to be digestible. 
but it's just not very pleasant, so I don't. There we go. So that I'm going to set aside, make some food in a minute, and then these little freezer boxes, which you can use for years and years and years. Um, grew up with, set it in with having a family of nine people that I think are still in use to this day. They're, they're terrific for freezing things and not shattering them. So I just kind of rest my little filter across my containers there and ladle my broth in. Now, some people might think this is a lot of work. If you've ever gone and purchased uh, good real bone broth um, and know how expensive that is, but if you're like me and don't want to spend that much on buying broth, and also of course this has the benefit of using up all of the you know bits of the food and not not letting things go into waste and landfills and as we've already discussed bone broth is super nutritious and high in minerals and collagen it's it's one of the more healing things this would actually be the basis of something like a, a real chicken noodle soup not like a instant ramen out of a packet but the, there's a reason that was the kind of thing that people would eat when when sick because this is very healing i will also occasionally if it's just really cold or especially if i'm feeling a little bit run down or coming down with some kind of cold i will just heat up a little mug of this add some salt and and just drink it like a cup of hot tea or whatever you would think of it as i do that as well and and it's really good and then of course i use it in making soups and i could even cook greens in it if i do you know rice or lentils often cook them in half water half broth just adds a little flavor makes it richer and in all kinds of sauces stir fries i use bone broth almost as much as i use garlic in my cooking in general and the flavor is just wonderful again you can see my little strainers just filling up slowly with the little bits of bone and um, joint tissue and such there. Slide these out of our way. Usually from one, again you can do this with any kind of bone that you like, you know, beef, chicken, pork I guess, feed pork, uh, lamb, uh, elk, whatever. Turkey and poultry is probably my my favorite of all the broth flavors, but I do lamb broth, beef broth, elk broth. Um, any any time I have bones, I keep them and and do this with them. But anyway, back to the price. If you've ever gone and bought a good, real, genuine bone broth, you will probably think that just pouring water over bones, which would generally otherwise go to waste. Um, waiting five days and then taking a couple minutes to strain it out like this is a pretty good deal for what you get and the um, the nutrition and the taste that it's going to add to everything that you use it for. So that is, I know there's lots of other details out there from lots of people who do uh, videos on, or you know blog posts or whatever on how to make bone broth but I just finally got around to filming this because so many of you guys have asked me so many times about it because you see it in a lot of my cooking when I uh, share recipes that I like. So that is all I do. It is not complicated at all. Um, it's somewhat time consuming if you count the, the days that I let it sit. And again, you could go just a few hours and you'll have a broth that tastes good, that has rich flavor. It just won't be as rich and it won't have as much in it um, of the minerals and stuff because look at what I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Almost done here. Still have some little bone bits in the bottom that I didn't scoop out earlier. You could get a whole nother bowl and just pour this straight through. I just find it just as easy to not make an extra dish and um, 
filter it through into my individual containers like this, but you wouldn't have to do it that way. Oh, and I'm going to put these in the freezer. You can certainly also can this. I do. If I, if I have enough to make enough broth, I'll go through this within a, another week or two and use it all up. Uh, or you can keep it in the fridge for a few days, but it's certainly also cannable. It's recommended you use a pressure canner, just like canning any other kind of meat. Um, but I, I have and do can broth if I have enough extra to do that with. So, and I'm going to let these, you know, cool off here on the counter for a bit because they're still pretty warm since we just took it off the wood stove. Slide them out of my way. And so the bones here themselves, this is what, if you have them simmering for four or five hours, you'll pull, you know, a bone like this out and it'll still be firm. You would not be able, that's breaking what I'm not even trying to show you, um, you would not be able to break it at all. I mean, you could smash it or if you're really strong, you might be able to snap it, but it would splinter like we talked about not wanting to give to dogs and such. Even after, say, three days, I can start to break them, but it's really uh, still fairly difficult. But after five days, here's what happens. This is, takes very little pressure at all. Um, and you just give any of these bones, even the big leg bones, a squeeze, and they just go to mush. Um, so while a lot of people have told me, oh, that's not necessary to cook it that long, and it may not be, as long as the bones are getting more and more soft and crumbly, I know something is still coming out of them. So I know there's more of whatever those minerals are in my broth. And then I get this really nice bone mush that's just like a kind of a moist powdery paste, not splintery or sharp or dangerous at all. And Burley does love that. He eats this stuff like candy. I don't know if the camera can see him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yummy. Yummy, yummy. So I just mush this up. I don't give him the whole pile quite at once. That'd be a little excessive. But over the next couple days, he'll, uh, he'll eat up all this bone mush. And so after, you know, eating your turkey or whatever other, um, you know, meat you use, if you eat meat, you can really prevent a lot of waste and get a lot of very valuable nutrition out of what is normally these days thrown away because absolutely nothing of this is going to be thrown away. We, you know, ate the meat, the, the you know, um, muscle flesh, and now have leached out most of the components in the bone. And then what it remains of that, Burley is going to eat. So not one speck is going to be thrown away or, or just discarded. So anyway, that gives you the idea. You can see what I'm getting here is just just a powdery mush like that. Very, very good dog food supplement. And he, he loves the broth too, if I share a little broth, but I really love my broth, so I don't share very often. So here's my rich broth. And there's a bone I haven't mushed yet, but this is the texture and you can see how easily those little bits just crumble. This is the texture of that um, remains. And if I just, you know, squeeze that, it just all crumbles. And that is why I cook this, let it simmer, just, just below a simmer almost, for five days. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yummy, yummy. That's your favorite food snack? Yummy, yummy. He doesn't leave any crumbs at all. So, there you go. That is just how simple and I would say fast because it doesn't involve a whole lot of your time but it, uh, it, it just involves waiting time um, that doesn't need you to be doing anything so not entirely fast in that sense um, but simple and uncomplicated and how little work it is to make yourself a whole bunch of delicious bone broth 
And then especially if you have a, a dog or chickens would eat this or whatever else, um, pigs, if you have pigs or something like that, or you could just put this bone mush, mix it, mix it into your soil in the garden. Um, it'd be similar to a bone meal, though they're not cooking bone meals as far as I know, usually for a while before using them, but you could use it as a soil amendment too, if you have soil that would benefit from that. And that's, that's what I do. Super easy. Doesn't require any particular skill. And again, like I said, no need to have a wood stove or keep it on your burner. If you have a more standard house with a crock pot, that is truly the easiest way to do it. Just put your bones in the crock pot, cover it with water, let it simmer for days. Oh, and I should mention, if you do have something like a bigger, um, a bone from a much bigger animal, like an elk or a cow or something, in five days it doesn't go quite this mushy. I'm not sure how many days you would have to, and maybe it, it would never leach enough out to get quite that soft. Um, but with smaller bones like poultry, it does go to just being mush. Hopefully that's helpful, and I encourage some of you guys to save bones from food you're eating. Of course, grass-fed, uh, pastured, is going to be best. Hopefully that's the, um, if you're going to eat meat, that's what you're eating anyway. So don't waste your bones. They are, uh, the, the, what comes out of the bones like this of a turkey is more important to me than eating the turkey meat itself which I also like. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.